Well, good day. I'm here to talk about God. And ever since man has walked the earth and they have learned to communicate, they have tried to explain their existence, which is basically the basis of organized religion. I'm here to talk about knowing God, not about religion. In fact, I don't believe you need religion. To know God is as simple as knowing how to breathe. You can't learn it from a book. You can only experience it. Knowing God is a lot like musicians. You can learn to read music and play an instrument but the ones that truly inspire us are the ones who never had any lessons, who just know what to do, and they can't explain it. It's the unexplainable inspiration and knowledge that comes with you, comes with you by opening your mind. I'm an only child. I was left to develop on my own without interference from any cousins. I had my parents are both only children, so the house was pretty much my own domain. I didn't have a big brother coming in to punch on me or a little sister needing something or a cousin dropping by. I was left to develop as you are supposed to. Let your mind roam free. It was helped along by some chemicals that enable you to do that, to break the bounds of constructed society. You see, you've been told for a thousand years, at least a thousand, that you need a book. You need to learn the rules, you need to repeat the phrases, you need to bow down and obey, when really it's a lot more simple. That is all an ego thing. A man-made structure requires you to give authority to someone else. It also encourages you never to trust your own judgment, which is really control. That's why I think that when Satan was cast out of heaven to come to rule the earth, he took over Christianity and made it so it was more like a strict regimen with rules. And what better way to get back at God who has no ego than to make it an ego thing. Now, some of you are not following me along, I know this, because you, it takes, it's going to take a while for what I'm saying to digest. Because you are so inundated from birth, they, they baptize you before you can ever have a chance to think about it to think about whether you like it or not. But I encourage you, and that might be the reason they want you to have more children so that you don't have time to ponder the questions you're not supposed to ask. I mean, if God is the creator of everything on this planet, he has no gender. It is not a he or a she. You can't see it. It's invisible. But man, in his own vanity, wants you to think it looks like, like let's take King James, for instance. The most popular or most known image of Jesus 
is a man with flowing long blonde hair and blue eyes. And Jesus was a Jewish man who grew up in close proximity to the equator, which is very warm, the desert. What color are the people who live in countries close to the equator, like Africa? They're dark-skinned people. Their hair is not blonde and straight. It's usually curly or very curly, like black people. In a family that has more than one child, there's always interruptions. And you always have somebody telling you that you need to believe one way or another way. You can't make up your own mind. I think that God had really intended for you to make your own mind up about your own things. That's why he has only one child. Jesus had no children. I have no children. <clears throat> I have a bigger mission than raising children. <clears throat> they encourage you to have children to <clears throat> make their base stronger. But the main thing I wanted to talk about is you don't need a book, you don't need a church, you don't need a group to tell you that you are thinking the right way. You need to make up your own mind about this on your own and not talk about it. God doesn't need promotion. It just needs open minds. And I'm telling you, it's as easy as breathing. There is no guideline on, on how to know God. It comes to you when you're ready to accept the real, true God. Not through a church, not through some man in a robe repeating verses over and over and over and over. That's hypnotizing, brainwashing stuff. You're not going to get into heaven because you obeyed a certain group's rules. It's all within here. It's all in your heart. If you open up your brain and your heart and use, God intended us to have a brain that used 100% of the power of the brain, which is a remarkable organ. Religion, and society encourages you in their many ways to use 20% of your brain. Because if you use your whole brain, you will figure out their agenda. It's happening right now with the Republicans. Like I said, if Satan was cast out of heaven and tossed down to earth to rule the earth, the best way to get back at the people who threw him out would be to hijack a religion in his name and totally screw it up. I'm not saying that churches don't do good, but you don't need them. If you need people to tell you you're doing the right thing, you have different problems that need to be addressed in different ways. God has been used as a drug rehab, a way to get criminals out of jail. You know, how many people who murdered 20 people said, I found Jesus, let me out. That's your idea of doing that, so you so you change. The thing it is, the thing I like about Islam is, and I've studied all religions, but 
with the Muslim people, you don't go to church on Sunday, say, I'm sorry for killing those 10 people, and then they clear your slate. No, everything adds up at the end of your life. So the best way to avoid any of that is to not do those things. That's the basic basis of Islam, which has been demonized in the USA since 9-11. But the Islamic people that I worked with, I worked with many over the 20 years I worked at the college. They are the nicest people, the most peaceful people, and the most willing to help of anyone I know. So I got sidetracked by a, a delivery and uh, I could start over and repeat what I said once about finding God is a lot like learning music. You can learn music, do the scales, do the exercises and learn from a teacher who will teach you what he knows. But you won't be inspired you'll be just like a trained monkey that learned how to move his hands in a certain way. The inspiration is what really makes you a great musician. And all of the great musicians, Jimi Hendrix never took lessons, did Bach or Beethoven, they were inspired. How can a man write music for 26 people in an orchestra? Without recording equipment, he hears it his. It comes to him. That's what God is. God will come to you if you allow him in. If he's knocking at your door, the church might say, oh, it's, it's a bad thing. Don't listen to it. Listen to me. But that's a human ego thing. Human egos need people to tell them, you're great, we worship you, you're the only way. But there are a lot more ways. And a human being has a lot more options than they are societal allowed. Society will keep you locked into your own closet into your own small pocket. The leaders, the law people, the churches, that's what they want. They want you to be a slave, a brainwashed monkey that does what you're supposed to do and not realize your potential. I can't say anything more better about the being an only child has allowed me to explore and expand my horizons far beyond anything else. Because I didn't have the interruptions. I believe those interruptions from siblings are what stopped that process. If you're left with hours to ponder the questions of the universe, you'll have the questions to the universe. But if not, you won't ever think about them. Why do you think Catholic families were encouraged to have six to eight children? If that happens, they never have the time to ask those questions that are in their head naturally. And it also builds more people. Or they baptize you before you have a chance to even think about it. So when you, by the time you realize, oh, I'm a Catholic or whatever, oh, that's what I am. Most people just accept it. But by the time I was 14 and was given some LSD, 
and the world opened up like two giant doors on a mountaintop and I was looking out over the world and realizing there are no bounds, there are no boundaries, there are no obstacles, only the ones that society places in front of you. Once you learn how to sidestep or slalom through those obstacles, you can live an enlightened existence. I hope my words ring some bells on some people. A lot of people don't like me talking about this. I think because they know they are trapped and don't know a way out and are afraid to try something different because they might not go to heaven after they are dead. When you're dead, you're dead. The Creator doesn't need to recycle people. He'll just make more. When a factory closes down, do they keep a couple of the old machines around that are outdated and don't work correctly? No, they tear the whole thing down and build anew because they're building new and newly engineered and designed products. The same thing is with this, with life. You have one life to live. You're not going to... What you need to do, I think, is live that life for this time, not for later. Jesus is a pretty cool guy but his hijacked image and sayings and writings have infected society for a couple thousand years. If you do some study on the real man, you'd find it's much different than what the Bible will tell you. The Bible was written by Romans. Okay, you might say, oh, well, they're Jesus' teachings. Well, it's like a, somebody came along and said, well, yeah, we like this, we like that. No, we got to change this. Like I'm telling you this whole time, you don't need a book. You don't need a man telling you how to do it. You'll just know that you have it when it happens. It's like... When you have to urinate, make water, you kn you know that feeling. And you'll know that feeling when God enters your soul. And he doesn't need any promotion. It doesn't work that way. It never works that way with that. With everything else, yes. Oh, orange juice is great. Even though it contains so much sugar and it's really it's bad for you, it's got a label on it that says 100% healthy, drink this, and people do. But that's the human condition. And humans are taught to not experience 100% of their mental capacity. They're encouraged to use this much of something that's that big. And I think I've made my point. Maybe not. That's what happens when you get interrupted. I'll do another one later. Have a nice life.